Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Friday, January 19th. And I'm going to do it on Slash GS, which is the S&P 500, and uh, the other three indices on Nadex as well. And uh, I want to, I'm going to make this trade plan actually really quick, hopefully five minutes or less. And because uh, I, I want to preface with this, uh, if you're a little bit newer, if you've been watching my trade plans for the year over the years, you know this already. But if you're a little bit newer, you need to understand that you cannot cannot without fail you cannot be doing anything stupid on fridays nothing stupid on fridays right uh you need to be taking fr fridays is extremely psychological day for traders because you can't be doing something stupid losing money on a friday and then you got saturday and sunday to sulk and think about your losses and the market's not open right so you're just sitting there pissed and so you can't be doing stupid stuff on Fridays. I usually trade a little lighter on Fridays, and uh, I only trade massive, massive edges on Fridays, and I'm usually definitely done uh, by 11 o'clock Eastern. For sure, I'm completely done trading by 12 o'clock uh, Eastern on Fridays. You need to make sure, like, t t please, just trust me. Over the years, I've already lost so much money on Fridays for you. There's no reason to duplicate that, okay? So let's start here on Slash GS. We can still find some strong edges, okay? Let's start here on Slash GS, four-hour chart. As you can see, we are, we are like, couldn't be more at equilibrium. We are at equilibrium, right? We're not overbought. We're not oversold. So we can be a bull and or a bear tomorrow. We just need this chart to kind of come to us and we can look uh, for our targets. Obviously, you can see we have plenty of room to run right back to that all-time high supply zone and then you can see if we start busting through that support right there off to the races down to that 85 82 80 zone right you can see how this uh, uh, if the if these bears want to continue cycling uh, back down right uh, so now what we do 15 day 15 minute plot chart what I'm doing here I'm just looking for structure I'm looking for the best places to buy, best places to sell. I'm looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. So the first zone to the upside that I see, it's so clear cut. It's like slap you in the face, right? It's right here. Value very high, plus 0.5 deviation. You got uh, supply, 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 supply. Whew, right? About six, seven times you've had supply come to that market right there. So why would it not do it again? Right? It's not 100%. Nothing's 100%. percent would all be millionaires if it was. But if, an example, tomorrow, am I going to sell 2801? No, that's stupid. That's why you got to have these charts because you know exactly where to stay patient. And then if you're seeing proper triggers, go for that. So again, it's not 100%. But over time, if you consistently stick to the most profitable zones, you're going to stay profitable because you're going to win more than 50, 60, 70% of your trades when you're sticking to zones like that. So what happens if we bust up above? So we, the bulls just freak out on Friday. We start busting above all-time highs. Well, hey, I got nothing for you. If we do start busting, right, go ahead and maybe take your stop loss and just call it a freaking day. Right, I don't think I'll mess with this chart. If we do continue grinding higher above 09 and a half, I'm not going to mess with it. Now, if we go lower, my favorite zone, my first potential zone of support uh, would be right here. You can see it's pretty clear, 90, 85, uh, negative and a half deviation. So if you stay patient and let these bears, uh, we can look for potential buy triggers there. Okay, and then of course our next potential zone of support is that negative one. You can see all of that massive demand right there from Tuesday. You also had quite a bit of demand uh, right there. So if these bears just start tanking, there is a, an opportunity there um, from, from support from 70 to 74. And then uh, if we start trading below 70 tomorrow, I got nothing for you. Just let the bears do their thing, right? So if we start just tanking and we're trading below the negative one, just screw it. You know, do, let it do its thing, right? Hopefully you made a little bit of money, maybe trading some breakouts or what have you. But I wouldn't on Friday and these bears are busting through negative one. No, thank you, right? I like my money. I'll be looking elsewhere on Forex or what have you. Uh, we can quickly look at slash uh, in Q, really quick, you can see this massive, massive, massive supply zone right there. So you got that um, right around 30, 40, right? Uh, if we do go lower, you'll notice how 6,800 is a pretty good zone. There's no value area or deviation. So uh, the only there is just some price action support there. But basically what's that telling me is I'm a, I'm a bull until we get through 6,880. 
sorry, 6,800. If we start busting through 6,800 and then holding lower highs, I can maybe look for a breakout and then try and at the money spread this chart lower using that uh, 85 to negative and a half deviation as my TP targets, which stands for take profit. Okay, and then yes, you got potential support right there on that negative uh, and a half. And for me, I'm not gonna even bother trading this chart beyond negative and a half. It's Friday, no thank you, I'm, uh, I'll be done on that chart. Now, there is some edges here on YM that we gotta talk about. So the thing about YM though is that the volatility kind of, uh, the volatility number shrunk. Volatility number's a little, a little odder than the other three. And so you can kind of see how, how small or how short the volatility lines are compared to maybe last night's volatility lines. Um, but as far as if we go lower, I do some I do see some nice support right here in that zone, the negative and a half, and even that negative one. Okay. And then if we go lower, there will be some potential resistance right there. There, you got plus 0.5 value area low Friday POC, uh, but you can also use that as a breakout. Get up above, hold higher low right there. There's your entry on an at the money spread. Get up above, hold higher low, and then go ahead and target uh, that plus one deviation. Forget the 80% rule, target the plus one. You can kind of see you got resistance, and then you got support, support, breakout, resistance, right? So use that plus one deviation because you got great structure to the left. Use that as a potential. Uh, bull target to the upside. So if we do get massive bulls in the indices, this is likely one of the charts where you'll want to be. And then of course you got uh, resistance right there from value area high and plus one. <clears throat> RTY, some really good structure on RTY. I really like this zone that if we get some some big old bulls, I like that value area high plus 0.5 deviation Friday POC uh, as resistance. And then if we get massive bulls like big time, get up above and then start holding higher lows, this chart will likely want to try and grind its way back to that uh, zone as you can see it right there. And then for sure, we, I can look for potential sell triggers off of that as well. And then I would go ahead and use 75 as a line in the sand here. These bears break and hold lower highs. We got 70 as a target and then we got uh, 67. So here's your TP targets, but you gotta get through set, hold lower highs, right? That's your entry on an at the money spread and then target right there. And that'll take us back to that original uh, range that we formed over a, over two weeks ago and then um, you can so you can see how this was resistance resistance there's even more resistance and then we had breakout and then we can come back and use that past resistance as potential support right there okay and then if we really tank you do got some, some fantastic support around uh, 62 to 60 so comment if you have any questions or reach out to me or Ryan Smith